We don't really appreciate our cardiovascular system enough. That's your heart and your blood vessels. Your heart beats 2.5 billion times in your lifetime. Every day, it pumps the equivalent of 2,000 gallons throughout your body. And it's all automatic. We don't even have to think about it. Pump so hard, you can feel it on your chest. Pump so hard, you can hear it. You can hear the turbulence as that, that heart sounds like lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. And again, all automatic. Now, of course, things can go wrong with your cardiovascular system. In fact, the leading cause of death, the leading cause of death in the U.S. is heart disease. Oftentimes, it's due to a blockage of the vessels that supply your heart, and you get a <gasps> heart attack. It doesn't get enough blood, you get a heart attack. We can get past this blockage by putting a little stent and opening it up. Doctors can do that by what we call PCI, percutaneous coronary intervention. Put a little stent, open the blockage. We can also bypass the blockage. We can take a blood vessel from your chest or from your leg and sew it in and kind of bypass the blockage. That is what we call a cabbage, not cabbage like the cabbage you eat. Cabbage as in short for coronary artery bypass grafting. And every year, half a million cabbages are done in the US. It's an astounding number. It's make, it makes it one of the most common surgical procedures. We usually do it when the heart is stopped, otherwise it'd be difficult to, to work on it. And we use an artificial pump to, to move the blood around. So a lot of things and a lot of moving parts going on. And one person contributed more to this field than anyone else. Enter Alexi Carroll. Now, Alexi Carroll was a French doctor born in 1873. A good but not excellent student, he would find it difficult to get a position in France, mainly because he failed his exams twice, also because he wrote a report about a woman that was cared from tuberculosis by pouring holy water on her stomach. And uh, I guess the French medical community didn't want any part of that, so he found it difficult to get a position. So he came to the good old US of A, to the University of Chicago. Shout out to Gobbs, a little inside baseball. And he would study and do research on vascular surgery surgery of the blood vessels. Sounds random, but it really wasn't because when he was younger, the then French president came and visited his town. Awesome, incredible. Except one thing, when he was visiting his town, he got straight up assassinated. He was stabbed and he died of internal bleeding due to his portal vein being severed. Now the portal vein is a very important blood vessel in your liver and he bled out. And this left the lasting impression on Carol. Pretty hard to forget that. He thought that if they could have repaired that blood vessel, he would have survived. But back then, repairing blood vessels wasn't really a thing. The technique wasn't there. So he set out to change that. Using sewing lessons he learned from an embroiderer and his mom, he basically developed all the suturing techniques in vascular surgery that we still use today. And that became the basis of things like repairing blood vessels and also became the basis of sewing in blood vessels to make a bypass, cabbage. He would also later in his career team up with an engineer and av aviator, Charles Lindbergh, to create the first artificial heart pump, which made it possible to do heart surgery and heart transplants by pumping blood around while we operate on the heart. He made amazing contributions to vascular and heart surgery, but his career kind of took a hard left turn. He would publish a book called Man, the Unknown, and talk about the problems that were facing civilization and possible solutions. Unfortunately, these solutions would include things like eugenics, killing inferior humans like criminals and those that are mentally handicapped. Of course, this was very controversial and he was forced into retirement, which shows you that even if you're a Nobel Prize winner and a doctor, you can still be a jerk and an idiot. They're not mutually exclusive, but if we forget all that, and we just look at his contributions, for his contributions in vascular surgery, in developing what we now know as cabbage, in developing the first artificial heart pump, which we still use for heart transplants and heart surgery. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1912. Hope you enjoyed this video. I wanna ask a question before I go. And that question is, should non-medical contributions affect your ability to win the Nobel Prize? Let's take example what we just talked about. What if you made incredible contributions to science, but you also made very controversial inflammatory works? Should that take into account your contribution to science? Whatever you think, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you wanna see more videos of the series, hit subscribe and click here for more of the series. Thanks.